Welcome to our lecture online and now we're going to take a look at what we call the acid dissociation constant. What is that? Well, it's a constant that determines the, uh, the degree to which the acid will dissociate its hydrogen from the ion, from the conjugate base, so to speak. Uh, for example, if we have an acid, some, any sort of acid that has a hydrogen um, atom attached to it, and it's mixed in water in an aqueous solution, it will dissociate into a hydrogen ion and the conjugate base. And of course, the hydrogen ion will, will combine with the water to form a hydronium ion. And of course, with weak acids, that will only happen to a certain extent. For example, when we have acetic acid and we place it in water, even though the molarity of the acetic acid may be one at the initial start of the reaction, at the end, we'll see that only 0.42% uh, of the acetic acid has dissociated into the acetic ion and the hydrogen ion, which then formed the hydronium ion. And so the, the, uh, what we call the acid dissociation constant will be able to give us a, a picture into how much the acid will dissociate into, its, uh, uh, into the hydro hydrogen ion and its associated or conjugate base. So here's the equation that determines the the acid dissociation constant. You take the, the concentration of the hydrogen ion, which of course is the same as the concentration of the hydronium ion, and the conjugate base, the concentration of that, and divided by the concentration of the acid. But HA, the concentration of HA, is the final concentration of the acid, not the initial concentration of the acid. So it's not going to be one mole in the example that we have here. So the question is, what would be the acid dissociation constant of this particular example. Now, to get a feel for that, notice that if we let x be the concentration of either one of these two, so if we let x equal the concentration of the hydrogen ion, which of course is going to be the concentration of the associated or the conjugate base, we can then see that the uh, constant, the acid dissociation constant, is going to be equal, and we usually write, like to write a small a like that, is going to be equal to x times x divided by the original concentration, that would be HA original, minus the concentration of x, because notice that this will no longer be one mole after a certain percentage of it has associated into its ion, its conjugate base. Now, for example, if, if, x is much, much smaller than the original concentration of your acid, molarity or acid, then you can kind of ignore that and then you say that this will be approximately equal to x squared divided by the original concentration of your acid and we just leave it at that. That makes it very simple. But if x is significant compared to the original concentration, for example, if these numbers are much greater, then you can't make, then you can do that approximation, then you will have to use this equation right there. So in our example, since x is very, very small, I think we can get away with it. So we can say that in this case, this is going to be x squared divided by the original concentration of your acid, CH3, that's acetic acid, COOH like that, and we just put initial down there. So in this case, that would be equal to 0 0.0042 quantity squared divided by 1, which, with the calculator, we'll find out what that is equal to. So that would be 0 0.0042 squared at. So that would be equal to 1.764 times 10 to the minus 5. Just out of curiosity, how, how much do you think it would have changed if we didn't take this particular uh, approximation. So let me get a different color. We use red. And let's say now we, we don't want to make the approximation. So in this case, we go, okay, A is equal to X squared divided by the concentration of our original acid. I'll just write it like that. AH or HA. I think we, we use HA for the generality. So HA minus x, so in this case that would be equal to x squared divided by, or let me put in the numbers anyway, so that would be equal to uh, 0 0.0042 quantity squared and 1 minus 0 0.0042. Let's see what we would get if we didn't approximate it. So we get 0 0.0042, we have to square that, and we divide that by the quantity 1 minus 0 0.0042, 
and we would get this instead. We would get 1.771 times 10 to the minus 5. So you can see that it only makes a very tiny difference. So for small numbers of the dissociation, we can go ahead and use the approximation. When the number gets a little bit bigger, then you can't get away with it, and then you have to do it like that. In the next video, I will show you how to actually calculate the pH of the final solution depending upon the concentration of the initial solution and how it dissociates because it does make a difference when the concentration of the initial solution is much less than one mole uh, per liter. Then you see then you have to calculate that and it gets a little bit more difficult. We have to actually use a quadratic equation to find the pH of the final solution and we'll show you how to do that. But for now, we just want to make sure you understood what we mean by the acid dissociation constant. Notice when the constant is a very small number, a very small percentage of the acid actually dissociates into its hydrogen ion and the uh, conjugate base. And if the constant, if the if the uh, K is a large number, then a larger percentage of it dissociates. So K is also an indication of how weak or how strong the acid is. If K is very small, then we're dealing with a very weak acid. If K is very large, then we're dealing with a strong acid. So you can see that K sub A definitely does give you an indication of how strong or how weak the acid is when the dissociation is not complete, when we have a reversible reaction.